Hello, my friends. I am Rick, and this is your seat at the table, and we are going to look at something that's a little bit different because you know it is what it is. Uh, this is the Forgotten Realms Atlas. This is a Dungeons and Dragons secondary product. So this was a product produced by a third party for the Dungeons and Dragons game system. Prior to all this funky talk that's going out now, how uh, the big corporate money bags at uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast are now wanting to basically get a chunk of everybody's pie after for decades allowing people to uh, tap into their franchise with some uh, OS or OTR or whatever the heck it's called. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that because uh, frankly, I have, I have shelves full of this stuff and I don't give an F what they think they're going to do because it's not going to affect me personally. I'm going to play a DD and d game campaign. It's more likely going to be for my 3.5 collection because that's what I have and that's what I like. And the newer stuff, you know, I'm not a big keen fan of it. Anyway, this has been sitting... Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but I have a little reading rack that sits next to my uh, facility in the bathroom. So, you know, just because that's where I have things odds and ends stuck in. So I've got something to help, you know, pass the time a little bit. And one of those items that have been sitting there for a while is this. I read through this probably a year ago and it's been sitting there. It was starting to get covered in fuzz and I thought, mm, I better pull it out. And there is, this is created by Karen Wynn Fonstad. And, um, she has created a number of these things for other franchises. There is one for uh, Lord of the Rings, the uh, J.R.R. Tolkien material that's not game related. It's related to his novels and the, their journeys and histories and stuff. But the artwork, the map map work in there is superb. It's traditional of what we expected from early uh, Middle Earth material, from uh, Lord of the Rings material, and uh, the Middle Earth role playing game, otherwise is Merp, it, which I have reviewed viewed extensively on my channel you just have to go back about a year or two to find it it's it's a it's one of those 800 plus videos there's a lot of them in there so there's a uh, a atlas for middle earth that was created by this end of this this lady i believe and it's in this same venue it's an awesome book and this here is as well too so if you're not familiar with dungeons and dragons or in some cases that in the vernacular we usually called it advanced dungeons and dragons this is where a d and d comes from and somehow along the way they uh, drop the advanced part off and that's is what it is but within the the d and d franchise there are a number of worlds that have been tapped and the two most commonly known is Feyran or Forgotten Realms which is what this is an atlas for which is the granddaddy of or I should say the big the big the big beastie of the pre-made pre uh, worlds to operate and play out of the pre-made sandboxes and, and then there is Dragonlance. Dragonlance there's a whole slew of no uh, novels just like Forgotten Realms there's a whole slew of novels great characters great stories by a lot of different authors which I happen to own quite a few of then there's Dragonlance and Dragon's Lance is just a different fantasy setting from Forgotten Realms and it has its own tw uh, interesting tweaks and and takes on the traditional fantasy tropes and genres and memes that you would expect to find and I have read a number of the books over the years but not nearly as many as I did Forgotten Realms and I never really quite got into Dragonlance material and they didn't produce nearly as much as they did Forgotten Realms was the uh, that beat all the end all for the longest amount of time before all this was Greyhawk and, and if you ever if you're one of the old school folks like myself who got started in the earliest days of, of, of tabletop role-playing games, tabletop war games, um, Greyhawk was the original sandbox for the Dungeons & Dragons created by Gary Gygax. And of course there was other other uh, unrelated sandboxes, uh, Judges Guild comes to mind, where if we go really far back, and, and one of the things that's touched in my mind is, is a lot of this talk about the uh, one d and uh, digital versions that they're pushing right now, and this uh, this change in uh, their operating uh, system, or their operating understanding for letting people uh, utilize the material to produce third-party products, 
And uh, so Wizards of the Coast, uh, Coast and, of course, Hasbro, their controllers, uh, they're run by people who don't play, who are not gamers at heart, do not grow up eating and leave, living and dreaming and sleeping and, and, and arguing and, and conspiring and, and, and envisioning the material that, that so many of us have that's led to such a huge, wide genre of game systems and game companies and, and, and scenarios, etc., etc., they're bean counters. It's about them. It's all about the money for them. They need to get the money. They need that generation. And they start seeing these these third party outfits that are really cashing in on it. I mean, look at uh, uh, Critical Role, for example, the sheer success Critical Role has, and they're netting millions of dollars in, re in revenue. Uh, and so, rightfully so, in some arguments. That that uh, Wizards of the Coast should should get a piece of that. They should get a cut of it. But how much of a cut and how significant should they they stomp down on it? All you gotta do is look at Games Workshop. If you're familiar at all with uh, the forty thousand you know forty k uh, game world and the corporate entity that controls that monetizes it and just how draconian they are on on these third-party operations cashing in on it you can see how uh, it can also stymie some growth and opportunities there's just many reasons why dungeons and dragons is the end all of all game systems out there it is the behemoth that all other game companies compare themselves to franchise wise and and there's reasons and there's solid good solid reasons behind it Big part of it is the fan base. Disney's learned some harsh, harsh lessons by crapping all over their fan base when they tried to retcon and re and, and completely snub and snop a whole, you know, decades worth of Lucasfilm and Lucasfilm related or sanctioned third party material, and it, and it's cost them more than this than it's helped them. And of course, then they have this Kathleen Kennedy, who has absolutely no love or care about the the Star Wars universe or any of its related stuff, other than except how it bon financially benefits the corporation and her specifically, because that's how she justifies keeping her job. So that goes that that rabbit hole. Things get worry. Things get crazy and and not so not so fun when we go down that kind of rabbit hole. But the the, the gist of the same thing is if we go back to the early stuff that everything is interconnected in, in many way in many forms that lots of people take that for granted and they don't they don't see it so when we're looking at this particular atlas we're looking at a quite extensive overview including an entry from ed greenwood one of the four, earliest persons creators of forgotten realms jeff Brub, his co co-conspirator at the time introduction geography of the realms the map work. This is the stuff that I really enjoy. I really find this stuff. I wish my lighting would be a little conducive to this. I don't know. Bright isn't doing it. Change. I don't think it's going to make a difference. That's just there. I don't think that's making it. It's not really bringing the color through. The color doesn't translate as well as what you see in person and in, in physical form which is always a great thing. I got a, I don't know what it is. Some days I get a little bit, the room gets a little stuffy in my feel, in my opinion. I always feel better when I get some air circulation. So that adds a little drone to the background. I apologize for it. So anyway, and we have our legends and it's this kind of, it's this kind of map work that really inspired me when I was younger to create many maps for my own games, regardless of what the system was and uh, to emulate as often as I could the particular style and uh, uh, signage or, or icons that they used to represent such and in, in, in crude versions, you'll see it pop up in my own little maps and stuff that I create for uh, my, my game, my would-be game system. So, like I said, we're going in and it breaks down all the major regions of Feyran and all the interesting uh, areas and, and, and geographies and things like this. Goes through the individual kingdoms and the, the lands in between the kingdoms, and some of these that are in the far east and the far south, places that really show just how vast the, the Forgotten Realms uh, sandbox is 
and the sheer amount of locations. And I have used this book numerous times, many times, as source material for, for backstop, for, for references, the maps, for example, the locations. And, and then there are a lot of these are, are interlinked with existing game supplements and modules and adventure modules and so on and so forth that goes that goes on and on through the books and the novels and the game systems. You know, for example, here's the lands of Icewind Dale, one of the most well known in the franchise. And we get the various locations. There's Mithril Hall and all the Water Deep, Baldur's Gate. These are adventures uh, that were taking place, and coinciding with uh, the, the travels and trials and tribulations of Drizzt New Arden, for example. So you can see when this book was published was when uh, the height of the earlier. Uh, Drizzt New Arden series was taking root and become extremely popular. So Ten Pounds, Kevin's Karn, Calvin's Karn, however you want to pronounce it. And then we go on to, you know, various locations. And these really served great source material for those who are that don't have a huge repertoire or, or interior knowledge, a personal knowledge of what you think a fantasy setting would be like. And to have actual visuals to give you inspiration to create your own is, is valuable. It's almost invaluable. I mean, there's just so much. There's so many opportunities and so many things, advantages to it, and so on and so forth. So, you know, here's Calimport. The very great city in the south, Pook's Palace, the Guild Hall. Like I said, most of this a big chunk of this book carries through uh, many of the Drizzt Du Arden uh, series and uh, the uh, uh, Harper series. So it's there's if those novels are still out, they're still around, still great things to to uh, read and enjoy if you can get your hands on them. You know there might be audio ver audio book versions of them that are that are cheap or free. Uh, that is something I, I would like to eventually afford as a subscription to audiobook so I could really tap into some of those when I'm out working at late at night and there are long, these long drives I have to take and sometimes we, uh, to service customers that are in various sections of our state. And it just is that one of those things, right? So the material is awesome. It's a great source book, a great read unto itself. And from a perspective of being a dungeon master or a game master, a storyteller, whatever it is you choose to call your 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 position in your at your table, uh, these sort of books are just they're just almost a must have. I mean, you really can do so much with them, right? And I think uh, over time, I'm going to so slowly start introducing some of my earliest Dungeons and Dragons material uh, just to the videos and for the channel and things like that. I know that a lot of people, most uh, uh, at least half of my subscribers in the last year and a half, are come to me from the BattleTech community and the MechWarrior community, and I highly, highly appreciate that. I appreciate all of you and all your comments and support and and so on and so forth. Uh, just wanting to show you that there is a bigger world out there than just Battletech. <laughs> I know it's just unheard of, but the facts are the facts that there's so much out there. And to reiterate what I was saying about 1 D&D &D and the current Wizards of the Coast uh, controversy that's been being kicked up, and this happens in every franchise at some point. Controversies come and go. In the Battletech franchise, for example, the clans were a massive controversy at their time. The Dark Age was a matter a massive controversy of its time. So when we see a transition from, it usually happens when one game company uh, sells to an, another. New owners come in with their visions and ideas of what they would like things to do and how they proceed and handle them, and sometimes how uh, awkward or muddy that can become. And we either embrace it or we don't. And uh, like I said, I've been on that both sides of that fence. I have followed some franchises long past the time when I should have just gave up and walked away from them and other times I, I jumped off the boat much sooner than I than I should have and I missed out on a lot of stuff a lot of material I'm trying to play a little catch up with Battletech in that aspect because I really truly uh, Battletech is in my, t my top three game systems uh, preferred play and as for tabletop board games it is the number one spot if you know when I can get the rare opportunities to do that but anyway so this is just what we're looking at and and I wanted to share uh, the Forgotten Realms Atlas 
awesome material, great item. I, I suspect it's probably still available out there. Uh, I imagine that because this is a third party print and it's as much an art work of art and a storybook unto itself as uh, more than a game supplement that's related to a game that there's probably more runs of it and it's more available. That's just my thoughts on that. Anyway, it looks like it's shaping up to be a decent weekend out there. It is now the 7th of January as I do this video. I do not know what date this will be posted, but sometime in the next few weeks, I'm sure. And I uh, hope you guys have an uh, awesome weekend. Going on, my friends. This is Rick. And hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, tell your buddies, tell your friends, tell your co workers, tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel worth checking out, right?